Welcome, to the Corp Vault channel, in this video we will discuss, Oracle Rack Configuration using, Com Vault version 11 console. Please, like, share, comment or suggest, subscribe for more videos, and, you can follow us on Instagram. Before we proceed with Com Vault configuration, let's get an overview of Oracle Rack setup. Oracle Rack configuration might look like this. For this video, let's say we have two node Oracle Rack configuration. Oracle Rack is like an application cluster, which helps load balance. Install Convault Oracle iData agent, on both the nodes. Oracle Rack backups and Convault are configured, via a pseudo client. We will discuss about it in a bit. These are some advantages of Oracle Rack that we have recorded. Please go through them. Do note. Oracle database backups contain, one or more of the following. Let's proceed with the configuration in ComVault console. As mentioned before, Oracle Rack backups in ComVault are configured, via a pseudo client. Right click on the client computer. You can do it from here as well. Select new client. Add new client window. In this window, you see various sections for various clients listed. Scroll through the window. Under application section, you will see rack, which we will use to create rack client. Create Oracle rack client window. General tab. Pseudo client name. Name the pseudo client. This name will be visible in the client computers. IData agent. Displays the name of the IData agent. Database name. Is the name of the Oracle rack database, not the Oracle instance. Storage policy used for the data of default sub-client. Select the storage policy that will be used for data backups on the default sub-client. Details tab. Rack database instances. Click to add Oracle instance. Add instance window. Instance physical client. Select the client computer from the list, on which the Oracle instance is found. Instance Oracle SID. Type the name of instance, that is found, or configured on the selected client computer. User account. Is the Oracle user account, under which, the Oracle backups will run. Change user account. Oracle user name is provided by, the database admin. Usually it is Oracle. Oracle home. Browse to manually select, or enter the path of the home directory where you have installed the application. This information is provided by, Oracle Database Admin. Connect string. Is an account with database administrator privileges, to access the Oracle database, that is, standard and recovery catalog databases. These details are usually provided by, Oracle Database Admin. If you know, then add the database username. Click tab, to add the password for the username. After, at the rate, symbol, type Oracle service name, which is the instance, or SID name. You can use, forward slash, if you are not aware of the username. TNS admin folder, is the path to the TNS admin directory. Add the second Oracle instance, like the way we added the first instance. Use modify, to edit the instance details. Use delete, to remove the instance details. Use catalog connect. When selected, a connection is established, between the target database, and the recovery catalog database, using the specified connect string, and the recovery catalog database will be used for backups. Enter, recovery catalog database username, password for the username. Recovery Catalog Service Name When cleared, there will be no connection, between the target database, and the Recovery Catalog database, and the target database control files, will be used for backups. Control File Auto Backup Lists the configuration options available, to auto backup of control file, so that, every time a backup, or copy command is executed in RMAN, an auto backup of the control file is performed. 
we always recommend keeping it on. Oracle Wallet, Auto Login. This option helps to use the Oracle Wallet feature, which is a secure external password store. If selected, you will receive warning that if you provide the username and password, the software ignores the Oracle Wallet feature. If you unselect the option, you will receive warning asking you to provide the username and password for catalog connection. Block size. Specify the block size for backup and restore operations. On the selected instance, you can disable the block size by setting the value to zero. In such cases, the default RMAN block size value of 1 megabytes will be used for backup and restore operations. If set, the value must be a multiple of the minimum physical block size of the Oracle database. Disable RMAN cross-check. This option is disabled by default. When disabled, the Com Vault software automatically runs an RMAN script that sets the prunable backup piece to unavailable when the data aging job runs. When you select this option, the Com Vault software does not run the script, which causes the prunable backup piece to remain unchanged when the data aging job runs. You can change the cross check timeout from default value of 600 seconds to a desired value. We have discussed these other tabs in our other video, so let's skip them. Once done click OK to create the Oracle Rack Client. Let's check Oracle Rack Client. After successful configuration, the Oracle Rack Client is listed under the Client Computers. Right click to check the available options. Most of the options are similar to any other client in Com Vault. New Rack Database Use this option to configure a new Rack Database like we just did. Select Properties Client Computer Properties for Oracle Rack Name is the Oracle Rack name, which we gave during configuration. Use Edit to modify the name. Display Name is what's seen in client computers. Use Edit Display Name to modify the display name to a name that can be easily remembered. Time Information shows ComServe Time Zone. You can override the time zone from ComServe to Client Time Zone if you wish the scheduled jobs to start in client time zone. Clock skew with ComServe displays the time difference between the ComServe and the client. Rest all tabs are similar to any other client in the ComServe. Click Advanced. We have already discussed IntelliSnap in our other videos. Job Configuration tab. Job Priority. You can set the priority of the jobs run by this client. Default value is 6. Valid values range from 0 through 9, where 0 has the highest priority. In the 3 digit job priority, this value holds the second position. Queue jobs if other conflicting jobs are active. If enabled, then the jobs start in a queued state if they conflict with other running jobs. After the conflicting jobs are completed, the queued jobs resume automatically. This option can also be set at a global level using job management from control panel. Enable job throttle enables client level job throttling. This option is available after job throttling is enabled at the comserve level. Exclude immediate jobs excludes immediate jobs from being throttled. When this option is set, scheduled jobs are the only jobs throttled. All application command line jobs and com cell console jobs that run with the immediate option are counted as immediate jobs. Use this option to run a backup without waiting for the queue to clear. Data threshold limits the number of data backup jobs that run simultaneously. The default value is 1 but can be changed as needed. When the maximum number of simultaneously running jobs is reached, new backups are queued and are run when current running jobs are complete. Log threshold 
works the same way as data threshold. It limits the number of log backup jobs that run simultaneously. Maximum number of parallel data transfer operations. The number of streams that the software allocates for backup for this client. This option honors stream throttling at the client level. When you set this option, the resource manager verifies that the total number of streams associated with a client at any point of time does not exceed the set value, irrespective of the setting defined at the sub client level. If all streams are in use, then the new jobs remain in the waiting state until all streams are available. We discussed encryption tab in other videos. Additional settings tab. In simple, it is the place where you set the registry keys provided by ComVault for the client. Adding a registry key from here is easy compared to adding the registry key on the client and is easy to manage as well. Deduplication tab. We will discuss deduplication in a separate video. KPIs tab. We can configure key performance indicators that appears in reports. Exclude from SLA and strike counts. When this option is selected, the client is excluded from the service level agreement, SLA, calculation, and the client strike calculation for the worldwide dashboard, ComSell dashboard, SLA report, and client strike count report. When this option is cleared, the client is included in these calculations. Copy redundancy allows you to specify the minimum number of copies required to meet the copy redundancy SLA that is calculated in the copy redundancy SLA report. Maximum allowed auxiliary copy fallen behind. It is the maximum time interval that auxiliary copy can fall behind before it goes into warning or critical status in the fallen behind secondary copies title in the health report. Recovery point objective, RPO. You can specify the number of days, hours, and minutes that make up the RPO. The RPO is the maximum number of hours that data can be lost during the service disruption. These settings will be used to calculate the data that appears in the recovery point and time report. Recovery time objective, RTO. You can specify the number of days, hours, and minutes that make up the RTO. The RTO is the maximum amount of time allowed to restore after a service disruption. The results appear in the recovery point and time report. Double click the client to see the agents. Like in other clients, you do not see file system agent listed for this pseudo client. Right click on the agent to check for available options. All options are same as we discussed in our other video for Oracle standalone configuration. Select Properties. Oracle Rack Properties. General tab. Displays the client name, iData agent, software version and installed date. Enable automatic instance discovery. By default, this option is disabled. If enabled, the software ensures newly added Oracle databases are accounted for backups. When a new instance added to this client, you will see the instance configured automatically, but you need to configure it for backups. Enable archiving. When selected, the database contents can be archived. Skipping, security and activity control tabs. Double click on the agent to view the configured instances. Right click on the instance to see available options. All options are similar, except a few. Restore to disk. You can restore Oracle databases directly to a disk from the Calm Cell console without the use of Oracle. You can restore multiplex data onto the same media, that is, the data that is associated with a full, incremental, or archive log are restored in parallel streams. Select properties. General tab. We have already discussed these before. Details tab. This we discussed while configuring the instance. You can make changes if needed from here. You should see the database status as open. Click refresh to see the current status.
Rest all tabs. We have already discussed. Double click the instance to view the configured sub clients. We have three sub clients configured for this instance Archive sub client for log backup, Default sub client for data backup, Selective online full for selective online full backup. We have already discussed selective online full and default in our other video. Let's review any new options available for Oracle Rack configuration. Right click on default sub client. Select properties. We will not discuss each tab, but discuss only new options available. In content tab, we see data is enabled, so data backup is configured for this sub client. Storage device tab. Number of data backup streams displays the number of streams used for data backups. To change the number of streams, click one in the list. Set the appropriate number of streams for each database instance by double clicking the appropriate stream space and typing the desired number. Log Backup tab Backup Archive Log option is disabled. So, archive logs are not backup using this sub client. Number of archive log backup streams displays the number of streams used for archive log backups. To change the number of streams, click one in the list. Set the appropriate number of streams for each database instance by double clicking the appropriate stream space and typing the desired number. You can check the database status from here as well. Click refresh or refresh all to view the current status. Right click on Archive Sub Client. Select Properties. Content tab. Data option is not enabled, so data backup is not made via this sub client. Log Backup tab. Backup Archive Log is enabled here. So, Archive Log Backup and Delete are performed via this sub client. We will end his video here. Do subscribe for more videos, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos. Thank you.